Welcome back to this episode of Inside the Digital Business with Dynatrace, where we're going to examine the current challenges and opportunities for organizations as they optimize themselves as digital businesses. For this segment, I am joined by Bernd Greifenader, who's the founder and CTO of Dynatrace, and I couldn't be more excited to have you on, Bernd. Welcome to the show. Hey, Rob. Thank you for having me. I mean, again, you know, as one of the founders of Dynatrace, I, I think, again, this is so exciting to really dive into how organizations are really adopt adopting and benefiting from your third generation platform. Kind of give a little bit of background and, you know, kind of help people understand on the other side of the screen here, what are some of the benefits that customers are seeing from the third gen platform and how you got here? Yeah, Dynatrace completely has um, really advanced from just observability as the first generation of it to its uh, second generation of actually automating all the answers from observability data to automatically create root cause and risk results to actually now with third gen taking the next big step in automating the uh, operations, automating security, automating business insights in completely new ways. And also with the third gen of Dynatrace, we have laid a foundation for AI to actually make work that well that we truly drive towards autonomous intelligence to really um, help our customers um, automate their businesses and especially the digital services that continue to grow in complexity and scale. So, I mean, think of um, in the second generation of Dynatrace, it was all about how do we reach 200,000 servers in third generation. It's all about defining also towards scales of millions of containers and digital services that we all process with the help of AI towards helping the customers with the automation of their systems and um, getting the business visibility they need. Yeah, no, I, I think again, and as I, I love, you know, one of the things I love about Dynatrace is I bump into your customers all over the place and get to have great conversations. But I, I think, you know, one of the conversations that's really been top of mind is agentic AI. I, I, I think that you guys are sitting in a really good spot with this because, I mean, you guys know AI. You've been using AI in your product for decades now here. And I, I think when you start to look at it, you guys are really out on that forefront. How do you really look at Dynatrace as a platform that's purpose built to help people in this as they move towards like agentic AI? Yeah, AI really has always been a uh, key thing for us. So even uh, years ago, we had um, already Alexa skills developed because we anticipated that as human, you wanted to interact with um, an observability platform in a way to get informed even when you're on the road or also um, release a specific tasks that the system would want to do automatically. And we have really now with third gen actually made this vision to uh, become uh, true and lead the foundation here for this type of um, autonomous intelligence. Because what, we, um, what you need there for AI to properly work is not just a generative AI layer, sort of, it's way more than um, a chat GPT interface, sort of, if you will. What you really need for an autonomous intelligence to work and for AI to work is the foundation of high data quality, the foundation of um, proper accessible uh, memory of how you store all the data in context. Think of it that you need to understand the causal dependencies in the data properly because only then you can provide a reasoning that is reasoning for facts um, in a deterministic way and not just in a uh, stochastic way as typically large language models do. So here is what the third generation of Dynatrace platform really lays this groundwork with having a uh, massive parallel processing data lake house 
um, that really puts all the uh, data collected from those million of services um, and containers all together have also a business um, level of data in there also connected. It truly connects all the dots together that enables AI to understand in real time the business context um, and sort of understands on the lowest layer the technical behavior, meaning um, really understands when there is an issue with availability or security flaw, but also on the second layer on top understands how to collaborate properly and help with automating tasks like um, routing a vulnerability to the appropriate development team um, already with the information at hand to remediate the issue and automating all the tasks to generate the test cases automatically. And on the third level on top, actually enabling the business leaders to connect all the dots of their business processes because we bring all this data together in context with the causal graph so that in business context they understand which users, which customers are impacted, is the business goal achieved, where do you need to optimize in the organization or in those digital business processes. Um, so we all enable this with this strong um, foundation of AI that is both combining the deterministic approaches as well as the large language models, uh, stochastic approaches. So and this is, is the key power to actually allow the business leaders to use automation with confidence in especially these complex systems. Because I also think this way, um, typical environments in our customers have 10,000s to 100,000s uh, and more of pods and um, Kubernetes uh, container instances running. And now you are adding over the next years even more AI instances. So alone, this will continue to drive complexity up. And especially as our customers also use more AI in their digital services that they build, um, all those systems will even more randomly talk to each other, which means you have to have an observability platform that does do more than just observing it, but actually uh, learns in real time, understands in real time all those interdependencies and helps you with an autonomous intelligence to actually cope with it and um, help you automate for reliability, basically auto-remediate, auto-protect, and auto-optimize that system. Yeah, no, I, I think again, that's, that was a, a masterclass in all the different layers of AI. And I, again, having talked to many of them, uh, they're trying to get that visibility all the way down in there. What have you seen from the customer base that has moved onto the third gen platform? And what are some of them saying? Because I, I think, like you said, they, they need to be able to provide that kind of business level context, which really, when you think about traditional platform engineering and observability, it was more down in the weeds, but now they, they're looking to bubble that up so that the business units who are the ones usually paying for the agentic AI are, are the ones that need that, that visibility. What, what have you seen out of the ones that have moved onto the third gen platform so far? Yeah, the search and platform now allows our customers truly to um, equip a much broader set of employees with value from this vast gold mine of observability data. So think of enterprises not only sort of like in the past have hundreds to thousands of users equipped with um, information from Dynatrace but actually move to 10,000s of users. So how can that be? Why that many? And this goes back actually to the layers. So it's not only that the DevOps and the SRE teams use Dynatrace, but also we extend to the left to all the development teams. So think of thousands of developers do live debugging, log analytics, and be are proactive about deploying into production as well as use Dynatrace to faster remediate issue and so forth. But it also reaches all the way into then the um, 
business users on one hand, because business observability is something that really resonates well. And this is because Dynatrice has achieved to put a logical business layer with our business events on top of the pure technical data. And this extends to this group to get business insights about their processes, think order to cash, think um, online commerce, think logistics in companies, sort of all of these different processes need to be optimized for proper outcomes. And then there's another fourth group so of end users, and this is empowered all by not just having um, dashboards from Dynatrace that other users can use to have um, a more common view of our companies um, sort of are run, but actually since Dynatrace third chain platform also allows to create custom apps, we have customers who create completely new use cases on top of the data they already own with Dynatrace because this is such a gold mine of data that they want to use to, for instance, um, automatically control how, um, for instance, uh, ship containers in their harbor are being controlled or others, how they deal with their financial transactions in new ways we never could have as a vendor thought about. So I find this is pretty amazing because this allows our customers to basically purchase uh, one platform but leverage is then the data, the AI and the analytics then in multiple different forms so that the value actually multiplies. Yeah, I, I think that's what organizations are looking for is how do they get leverage out of all of the different things they're already doing because the skill sets and things of that nature, they don't want to have to uh, learn yet another tool. So I, I think there's a lot going on you know, underneath the hood of all of these agentic systems, to, to put it mildly, uh, as they get there. Now, you just spoke about why you know, the third gen platform really helps customers you know, better now. What are customers telling you and you know, what is kind of the value that they're actually seeing out of the third gen platform that you're hearing back from them? Yeah, so I hear a lot from customers about um, how their expectations to AI are really high. So I have um, CIOs who expect that in the next three years that 50 to 70% of the engineers' tasks are being automated by AI. So while I'm not sure it's exactly that percentage, um, it is that expectation that we absolutely are in the best position to fulfill for our customers because of um, the ability to have such a long history and experience of understanding um, automation from a fact-based and causal approach and overlay this with the Chintik AI, we provide here um, the means that you can use automation with uh, confidence. So, yeah. and this goes, goes also then back to the developers because developers are other um, sort of audiences in our customer base and they expect that 80% of all the workload that is not creating new features, that this workload gets actually lesser and lesser through AI. That's exactly also where um, we are helping because it is those tasks of debugging, of optimization for performance or cost, or tasks like um, security remediation, sort of all of this is what developers get loaded on with shift left, test generation and so forth. There are so many things that they have to do and it's getting just even more that this is particularly where Dynatrace's third generation helps them through automatic collaboration processes, integrations into the development environment, automatic test uh, generation and so forth to offload that burden. And this brings sort of relief for the developers themselves and the engineers um, also in the SRE teams, as well as the executives love it because they look for more productivity because you can never have enough of um, technical knowledgeable um, people. And so basically Dynatrace complements then their teams. 
super interesting. And I, I think, again, yeah, it, this whole discussion has been really, uh, I, I think, enlightening, not only to myself, but hopefully to the people on the other side of the glass here. But one of the things I want to jump into is kind of get your final thoughts as these business leaders and tech leaders are really laying the foundation to really get a better understanding of agentic AI. What are some of your final thoughts on how they get started and really how they really lay that foundation for this shift? Yeah, as the customers all now add more and more of AI services to their digital systems, Think of it that their cloud services just not only grow in the number, but also their communication. They think of MCP servers, talk to other MCP servers in the Chintik to Chintik side of communications um, becomes even more uh, random or probabilistic uh, through AI as before. What this truly means is uh, you have to observe what's going on for compliance reasons, cost reasons, technical reasons, uh, even to make sure that the system works at all and provides value. So this is one clear thing. And secondly, as you continue to also um, observe these systems, you can't keep the data in silos because what I learned over the years in building AI for these kind of analytics, for analytics for root cause, security, use cases, analytics for automation with AI, that the only way to get really solid answers is by bringing all the data actually together, ensure that the data is in context. And this is also, for instance, why we have built SmartScape, which is a directed graph that we also store in the data lake house that gets updated in real time. And this allows actually um, for a, a deterministic AI layer um, that is under the hood then of uh, then the agentic um, AI layer um, to, to assist the reasoning with understanding a true causation to do fact-based decisions and uh, not just st stochastic decisions. So I think this is maybe the other final recommendation here. When you use AI, make sure there's enough of um, solid deterministic layers under the hood of all those agents because there's enough uh, randomness uh, with all this AI going on. And at the end of the day, you want value from it and an automation that you can trust um, and not just a hallucination. Yeah, it definitely is, I, I think, key. I, I think this is really, you know, enlightening. I, I think I, people are going to get a lot out of this. Uh, and I, I can't wait because, you know, next up we have one of your customers uh, coming on. So thanks for coming on, Bern. Really appreciate it. Uh, you know, this has been great. Thanks for having me, Rob. And thank you for watching this episode, the first part of this episode. Stay tuned for the second part of the episode of Inside the Digital Business with Dynatrace, where we're going to dive in with one of Dynatrace's customers, tell us who's going to help us really explore the perspective on how all of this comes together and how they're leveraging it right here on theCUBE, the leader in technology analysis and news. We'll be back right after a short intermission.